Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another Bullet Mars video. So this is going to be my pickups video from pickups that I got in uh, January and February, and also the pickups that I got at the Super Retro Games Fair in Leeds. So there is a lot to get through. Uh, I will be telling you where I got everything from and everything like that as well. So let's begin shall we so let's begin with what i got like january leading into beginning of feb so i picked up a few games that i thought okay i'll uh, get hold of and everything it's two games that i wanted so i'll start off with some of the ebay purchases first so i got i got two games off ebay and both for the uh, wonder swan well wonder swan and wonder swan color so first thing that i got is a uh, Digimon Adventures for the original one, just one complete box, and also Digimon Tamers 2 zero, uh, zero 02 for the one, just one color, both complete. Uh, thing with these, I got these from a uh, Yamtoko Classics on eBay, great eBay store if you after Japanese stuff, and though and it's really good the fact that um, pricing wise it can seem expensive because of that postage. But best thing to do is buy more than one item there. If there's all that you want, get multiple. Say, I've ordered this, this, and this. We combine postage. They'll mess you up saying, yep, fine. And then they'll send you a bill for the total price instead. So a very good idea to get that. Uh, the other one I got from Game, because I've been wanting to get this for a game for a while for me Wii U. Unfortunately, my Wii U has died. So I'm after being, after being uh, I've ordered a new main board, because uh, the fuse went, and then one of the connections on the motherboard went as well, so I'm waiting for the new motherboard for the Wii U gamepad to come, and it's taking forever to come from China, so hopefully I should get that soon so I can play this, because I've been wanting to play this for a while, and this is Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag FE. So I believe this game is all about the uh, Japanese idol, idol thing, so like idols and stuff in Japan, stuff like that. Uh, looks like a really cool RPG, uh, can't wait to get into it and everything, and looks pretty cool. The only thing I wish is that the games came with manuals instead of these like information leaflets and everything. I wish it came with them all, but then so I can't wait to actually get to play on this game. I'm, I say I'm still waiting for the main board to come. I'm hopefully going to get it next. It should come next week. Uh, they didn't put tracking on it, and it only tracks up to when it gets deported from China. So who knows with that. So, the next three games I got from Convert to Cash in Leeds. Um, if you're not familiar with Convert to Cash, it's a great store. They do a lot of retro game stuff. It's more or less like kind of think of it like a pawn shop sort of thing, but they specialise in like retro game stuff like that. prices and reasonable. The quality of the products does vary though. So you, you have to bear that into account, um, but I think price is actually pretty reasonable for some stuff they ask for there. Obviously some stuff they're asking far too much, but majority of stuff's pretty good, so I picked up some stuff there. I'll just show you what I got. So I got... Just hold on, actually. I didn't get that from there. Didn't pick that up while ago, actually. Um, <laughs> so I got two games from there anyway. I got Resident Evil Code Veronica, PAL for the Dreamcast. I've already got this as the uh, Japanese version, but uh, being after the English version as well, uh, quite very good condition. Only problem is, this is obviously someone bought this from a place like uh, Game Station back in the day, because they used to use marker on the actual inlays to cover up the barcode instead of putting a sticker on. So it's obviously got mark on the back there. Um, if if anyone knows a way to get rid of ink, like uh, off from mark pen off the inlays without damaging the actual inlay. If you could let me know how you do that, that would be great. <laughs> and the other game, I just got one for the May Drive. Uh, it looks pretty fun, so I thought I'll give it a whack. Um, and it's a guy on, so it's a side scroll uh, shmup, more or less, is this. So yeah, uh, again, great condition, old thing, yeah, I didn't pay a lot for it, but came, didn't have manual, but game works perfectly fine, so I'm happy with that. So, my next lot of pickups are all from the uh, Super Retro Game Families, which was held last Saturday. So last Saturday on the day of recording would have been Saturday the 18th. And 
I'm going to talk about it quickly actually. Um, I did find that it was far too, it will, it will get him, it will busy straight away. So I mean I went first thing, uh, it will busy straight away. I only stayed for about two hours and at the end of it I was like, uh, I really can't be bothered now, uh, it's getting ridiculous. I couldn't, it was getting to the point where I couldn't even get in to look at stuff because I just couldn't get in. And, Worst thing is you got people who are going like going up looking at games, but instead of like you know going in like that, you know, like literally the body width, they were like they were spreading the legs out, arms right like that, and they were like that hunched over, so they were all expanding their mass pretty much. To so, but I was trying to get in, get around. It got to point where I was just getting sick around. I thought you know what, I've spent enough. I've got stuff that I want. I'm going. Can't be bothered. But they are um, holding it in the uh, student union at the Frank Stratley June if next time. I think in June. So, when that comes up, hopefully it's a bigger, well, I know it's a big venue, I've been to gigs there and everything. So, yeah, hopefully it should be better next time. But I picked up some games, um, pricing, pretty good for all of them really. Um, I, spent about, I only spent about 50 quid in total, really. I didn't do too bad, I have to say of what, what I got and pricing and everything. I only paid about 50, 50, 60 quid, so I didn't do too bad. So, I'll show the... Mega Drive games first. So I picked up two games for the Mega Drive. Pick, um, picked up Jurassic Park. Been after this for quite a while. Uh, this is one of the games that my next door neighbour had and I loved it at the time. And um, playing it now, the only thing that I find is it's very floaty and there's a lot of there's a lot, there's far too much momentum on your character, so sometimes you just and you have to make too many uh, random leaps of faith, so you don't know what's underneath you. You have to make random jumps. So yeah, uh, happy to get hold of it though. Great game and really fun, and I love the beginning of it with the Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, rolling Sega. <laughs> so it's pretty cool, is that one? Uh, the next one I got was this one. So this is a sequel to uh, Castle of Illusion. Um, I bet, and again, this is one that my next door neighbour used to have, and we loved it. Sing, uh, multiplayer, it is fantastic. And this is World of Illusion, starring Don Duck and Mickey Mouse. So this is a, I'm going to say, action platformer, and it's a great multiplayer, and it just great use of the Disney license. A lot of fun, very quirky, and the whole idea of just being able to attack your teammate as well. So when you attack them, like they all get curled up and stuff. It's uh, quite unique. I uh, quite like it. Um, Again, it's a game that I've been after for a while, and when I see it, I'm not, I obviously fly like about 15 quid or something at these conventions, and I'm like, that's far too much for me to pay, so I'll pay 9 quid for it, for this one anyway, I'm happy to do that. And I also picked up a game for my R system. Now, I've been after this version, I've been after this game for quite a while, it's not rare by any means, it's just I never get around to picking up stuff, so I went, I'm getting it. And that is Lemons by uh, Cyanosis. Really good uh, part of the original Amiga version. Um, only thing is, with it using the controller, you get onto levels and it's asking you to do too much with the controller. So, and it doesn't, and it isn't quick enough. Is the the movement? So you end up like getting some of your lemmings killed because you can't quickly move. Like you can on the Amiga with the mouse, you can't do that with the normal controller, so I'm going to try it though with the uh, control stick, see if that's any better. I can't imagine it is because they're both, um, you know, digital control, it's all pressure pad based, but I'm hoping that it is slightly better with that, but I'll have to I'll give it a try, but again, really good. Um, it's got the digitised voices in as well, you know, that, and all of that as well, so happy to get all of that. And I picked up this game after after seeing a review on it online. I've been after it for quite a while. And it's just again, it's one of those games that I see and I just see price. I'm like, I'm not paying that much. I'm I'm, I'm very stingy with my game collecting. This game that I wanted to it looked kind of unique, so I picked it up. Um, this was on like fourteen quid, so I'll wrap it up like complete in box, and that's Hybrid Fairy. So Hybrid Heaven even. <laughs> Let me get it right. So this is kind of a RPG style survival horror type game. And what's really cool about it is the fact that when you get into a battle with the monsters, it 
like terminus that you choose, oh I want to do a right jab and you got like met combos, so you can make combos to actually eliminate an enemy faster and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And what is also nice, and it's also kind of survival horror esque in the way that you're going around a map and you're going back and forth a lot and stuff like that. So again, it's a very unique game and it's a shame that I'm more with the obviously with the franchise. Um but you know, Konami being Konami and Konami being the worst now. Um but yeah, it's it's really good and the only thing that I noticed is compatible with the expansion pack, so you can get these uh, high res widescreen graphic settings on it. But to do that it runs like absolute rubbish. So actually I just stuck it to standard definition and didn't bother using any of the expansion pack capability. Uh, the only thing is it can't do uh, it doesn't save on cartridge, it's save on a uh, memory card unless you gotta make sure you got a memory card plugged in as well. But overall really good game and uh, I'm happy that it came in one of the um, hard well kind of hard plastic cases ish. So I'm happy to get get it in that. And I picked this up as well, one one game. So I got Senkaiden 2. There, I just uh, I saw it and I thought I'd pick it up. Because uh, in the total, there, there was three Wonders One items in the entire convention at different stalls. And so I got this one from a guy, a guy who had just, he just had this one line there. I'm like, oh, how much for this? They were like six quid. I'm like, yeah, all of it. The other, then, there were one at the opposite side which had. Uh, one game, and then they had the Final Fantasy 2 variant of the console, but they were asking 70 quid for that, and I was going to get, I, I, I would have got it if the box had been a good nick, but it started fraying away, so the, the uh, top lid started coming coming away, so I'm like, I'm not going to bother, but I won't pay that much for that, after all, I only paid about like, you know, £50 for the Final Fantasy 1 variant that I've got of the system itself, so... But yeah, um, whenever I see one of the games at these conventions, I always get them. I'm a fan of the system, I think it's unique, and I do enjoy just fumbling my way through the games. Um, it doesn't look like an RPG, it looks like a... I want to say it looks more like one of those uh, digital comics sort of thing. Uh, visual novels that you see on Steam a lot now, and all that. And um, last two games that I got, I saw this. Um, Gary asked nine quid for that, I'm like, you know what, I'll take a bash on that. And that's a uh, Battle Arena Toshiden remix for Saturn. Really good 3D fighter. Um, it's a bit slow and clunky, but I do like the anime cuts, fully voiced anime cut scenes as well in it. Um, don't really know much about series, so this is like really me going off point. I think I have got one as well. Yeah, I've got Battle Arena Toshiden 2 on the PlayStation as well, so I've only had like brief exposure to the series, don't know much about it though. So I wanted to start off with this, go through story mode on this a few times. Really good game actually, uh, enjoyable weapon based combat. And again, great price and a great collection to my slowly growing uh, Sega Saturn collection. And the last one that I got, I've been looking for this one, for been looking to get this for quite some time. It's not rare by any means, but I needed it to complete my uh, GameCube. <laughs> my GameCube. So my, the GameCube that I've got is the Resident Evil 4 variant. It came with pad and everything like that. Other thing didn't have Resident Evil 4. I now have Resident Evil 4. I didn't pay a lot for this, and I'm happy to get it. But a lot of people are asking about a game like 15, 16 quid. Um, I think it was actually I got this one from Retro Plushy Games because they were asking 12, and that was the cheapest that I saw at any of the stalls. So like I'm getting it from there because it's the cheapest option. Great condition, complete, and everything there. I did see though the for £25 and I was tempted to get it was the Resident Evil 4 uh, red sleeve edition for the GameCube, which I originally believe was sold at Virgin. And there aren't many variants of that. I know you can get the PS2 version of it from Virgin with that with the red sleeve, but you, I don't see many of the GameCube versions and the only one when you're looking like, you only get like the red game, GameStop versions from America so this was a PAL version with the PAL box and I'm like, <clears throat> I wanted to get it and all that other time nah, I can't risk putting that much down but overall I had a great time and I can't wait to go to the next one at the Refactory in Leeds so that's everything that I've picked up there um, as for the channel, um, 
going through, I'm doing bit by bit playthroughs of Resident Evil 7 on the PC as well. So, that's the end of the video. So, I mean, if you like this video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Um, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Uh, let me know if you went to the Super Actual Games Fan Leads and what games you've picked up, and if you've made like, a YouTube video on it, then, you know, put put the link in the comment section. I'll gladly go over and watch, and if I, if I like what I see, obviously I'll subscribe. Um, and yeah, let me let me know what games you like and everything like that as well. And yeah, feel free uh, feel free to share this video through social media and Twitter, you know, Twitter, Facebook, what whichever one you use, uh, Google Plus even if you use that. And feel free to follow follow me on my uh, Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash uh, Mars Retro Gaming, I believe. I've got it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put a link for all my uh, social media accounts below so you can go to them and follow me or whichever in that. And feel free, yeah, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos like like this, as well as the play-by-play uh, -play of Resident Evil 7 on the PC. So. I've been Bullet Marv, thank you for watching, but as I say, at the end of every video, keep on gaming.